So basically what we want to do is inside of the Canvas Starter app, uh, Joseph has been working on uh, a very cool admin user interface to manage users. And it looks like this. Um, so you see it's fairly responsive. Uh, you can create new users, show details about the users and so on and so forth. Now the issue that we run into is when this menu expands and contracts, it's slow. So you can see how there's a lot more delay there than what we would like. So we want to do a little bit of refactoring and I wanted to show that um, here today. Uh, so looking at that code, users JSX is one of the routes uh, that is the, from the React router. So you can hit that, um, you can see that right here. Uh, this is the user's route in the admin section of the website. This page currently does everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract out just one little piece. Uh, right now, you can see that when I call get styles, I have to pass it a nav status. And in that get styles, that status is only used to calculate the margin left. Everything else in here is static. Um, so we are getting the styles and having to pass the style, having to generate the styles dynamically based on changes in state. And then we give that to the headers and then we map over all the users. Um, and we then come down here and actually generate the table. When really the only thing that is dynamic about the styles is this guy right here. So we're gonna build a new component. And we're gonna extract out that dynamic piece and see if that helps our performance a little bit. So I'm gonna make it just a common component. Actually, we'll keep it in the admin because it's a container component specifically related to the admin uh, interface. So let's just call it container. All right, so the container is going to have a render method. It's gonna have the get styles method. Uh, we're gonna to need to probably import React. Uh, let's just start filling out bits and pieces of this. Copy and pasting, it's my favorite way to code. Um, I think that's the right thing. Uh, React doc. Uh, the constructor is just going to call super right now. I'm not going to set up anything or worry about anything just yet. Uh, all right, so we're going to pull out this get styles right here. In particular, we want this margin left based on this status. So we're going to need to return object and that object is just going to contain this div right here because that's the dynamic piece that we're pulling out of the main users file okay so now we need we need to write the render method um, and the only thing render is going to do is it's going to render a div that changes its um, margin left based on the state of the component. So let's go grab that code. And as I do this, I'm going to pull the code out of the user's JSX file so that um, we can clean up this specific component and hopefully move towards a little bit more performant uh, code. Actually, let's do this. And now that I've pulled out that one dynamic piece, we no longer have to pass any values to get styles. So we can do that here in our new component. Just close that off. Uh, we're going to call this container. Like that. And now in the render, just scroll down. So really, the only thing this guy is going to do is. Okay, 
we're going to leave it like that for now. And then this guy right here will be our new container component. Container right here. Now we need to import the container component. So now we'll be able to use this on other pages that also um, implement basically the same design where you've got this dashboard here, or rather you've got this side navigation that needs to be able to push this guy back and forth. You can see that it's busted right now because I broke it, but we'll move towards getting it fixed here in just a second. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we still, we're gonna have to have this get state. Um, and we're moving this nav status out, so move it to here, and the state of this specific component is only going to care about nav status. It looks like nav status comes from the admin store, so we're going to have to go like that. Let's see, is this used? So we can actually pull it out of this component entirely because it's only used to determine the width of the page. So we'll do that. Uh, but now we have to monitor the admin store in our constructor. I'll pull that out of the user's JSX file because again, this component no longer cares about that store. But this guy does, so we'll put him into here. And he only cares about the admin store. And now instead of inheriting from React component, we're gonna actually go back to inheriting from the base component because the base component is what handles um, listening to changes in the stores. It sets up everything. Let's see, just again, I'll run through that really quick. Uh, it looks for changes in the store. Um, so when the component mounts, it'll watch the stores. When the component unmounts, it stops watching the stores, adds a change listener so that every time any data in the stores change, the uh, store change method here gets called, which calls the get state method. So that's what's happening right here. So get state will automatically be called um, for us, and this nav status will change, which will trigger a re render of the component. Okay. So now let's take a look and see what else. I think that might be everything that we need to pull out of here. We can get rid of this, we can get rid of this. Just verify that really quickly. Okay, so margin left is no longer used as a variable, so that's good. All right, and that will let us then um, continue to refactor this method so that we don't necessarily have to generate the headers on every render. Like it's basically static, the first time we generate headers, we're done. Um, and the first time we generate all these users, or at least each time a new user is provided to us and we generate the row for that user, we don't have to do it again. But right now, every time renders being called here, we're, we're redoing it. And I think that that's um, hitting, giving us a performance hit. So really we only want to generate the users one time and render that out um, so that we can improve our performance. Okay, so we've got this container sitting here. Uh, now there's one other piece, which is we need to render the contents. And I don't remember, it's been a little while. Does anybody remember how you render something props up children? I think that's it, Justin. It's, yeah, I've forgotten, but I think it's this stuff props actually. Let's find out. So here is our interface. Refresh this, let's see if we broke things. Um, oh yes, we did, because we have to inherit, we have to import base component. So let's do this. 
now we should have the base component available. Let's try this again. Load the page. All right, so we're still getting an error. Anybody ever seen this one before? <laughs> Type dot two uppercase is not a function. You might have to start from the, the base admin page again, Justin. From the base admin page? Yeah. What do you mean? And then just get back into the users. Sometimes if you if you change the fundamentals of the React component and try to oh. render it, it freaks it out. So you're saying we got to do this, and then yeah. choose this, and then just go back into it, yeah. Go into here. And then if it crashes, then I don't know what the issue is. <laughs> then we're just completely out of luck. It looks like we're still getting that same error. That's weird. This is weird because this is not Where's one. It from? Um, it's in the render in users.jsx type two uppercase is not a function. Um, Interesting. Create element. It seems to be having a problem creating the container element. I'm going to try an experiment here really quick. Uh, just in case I did get this completely wrong, let's pull that back out. And refresh this. Same error. So it's not the addition of this that caused the problem. Tag name typed up two uppercases and not a function. Let's put a breakpoint here and see if we can or here. Get down in the React code and see if we can figure out what we've messed up. It might not like the name container. I mean that could just be the issue right there. So type oh this is gonna hit this like five thousand times. Um, so you can see it's going through all the different tags. There we go. That's the one. So type comes in as an object instead of a string. It's a little tedious, sorry. All right. So in this instance, type is an object. So let's see if we can walk up, back up the stack and figure out why. It's this guy right here. It's causing this. Hmm. Oh, look. Got to do that. I bet that's our problem. That's looking better so far. Let's 
so state nav status is null. That's because we never set up our statement constructor. So this dot state is this dot get state. I think we're getting closer. Looks like we need to refresh because we can't reload that. There we go. That looks much better. Okay, so now we're rendering inside of that um, container component, which gives us the spacing needed for the left-hand nav. And if I hide and show this, you can see it's still slow, but I think that that's still because each time we're clicking on this, we're re-rendering all of the objects for this entire table. Uh, but this, having the container separated out, now lets us go back into the user's JSX file and move this code um, somewhere else. So I think what we want to do um, in looking at the React data table, they have a row getter method that keeps track of the index of the current of the rows that it's rendered. Uh, if we extract this piece of this code out, uh, we can do something similar. So. Um, Decide if we should do that now. Maybe we'll hold off um, and I will refactor that code and then it'll be available in the Canvas Starter app and then you can go see what the code looks like. Maybe we can talk about it tomorrow. I think that that is probably where we'll stop for today. Any questions? No questions, but a uh, comment. I think you should add some indentation to that uh, children in the container. Oh, yeah. We should probably do that. So this would look prettier like that. Yeah. Pretty. We do like things to be pretty. All right. Any other questions or things that we should change? Uh, after reading that, thinking about React, uh, uh, blog post this morning uh, makes me wonder if you shouldn't pass in that state of the style into the container as a prop instead of having the state held within that container. So that's a good question. Um, in this case, the container is the guy who gets to decide what, like, the only logic inside of the container is do I have a left margin or not? Um, like that's its purpose for existing. Okay. And so I think that it's okay to have that particular state be a part of the container. Um, the admin store, I, I'm not sure because I didn't write the nav status, but it looks like the admin store is the, it's like tracking UI changes. Um, so there's probably some actions that get called, like when you click this button, an action gets called to say, the nav bar is currently being shown. Um, and then particular UI components can track that to say, um, you know, let's track that state, like the state of the application itself. Okay. Um, then we can reuse the container in multiple locations. So like if we had uh, an interface for viewing and editing accounts, you could use the same container or maybe the dashboard actually will have the container on it as well. So that anytime this bar gets expanded, this space over here um, ensures that there's enough room for this nav bar to be shown. So I, I think it's okay to have that particular piece in here. Otherwise each higher level route, like the user's JSX or the dashboard JSX would have to track the admin store and then pass that to the container. And then that logic is spread out across each one of those components. Whereas in this case, it only has to live in this one single spot. Um, I think this is the way we want to do it. We'll try it. And if it gets unwieldy, then you know, we can always refactor it back out. Okay. All right. Any other? Thoughts or ideas? All right, until tomorrow. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Thanks.